Okay, in this video, what we're going to do is take a closer look at animation curves. By the end of the video, you should have a really good understanding as to exactly what an animation curve is. You should understand how to read them, and finally, how to manipulate them. And of course, all of this is extremely important in producing any sort of good animation. Well, sure, a lot of beginner animators feel that they can just jump into their scene, lay down a few keyframes, and then move on. That's and right. that is never the case. I mean, if that was the case, you guys would all be employed by the most high-end studios as animators, and that's it. There'd be no reason for us to be here giving you this lesson That's now. right. 99.999% of the time, you need to go in and edit your animation curves. That's so it's, right. it's good to get used to it now. Now, in the last video, we introduced you guys to the graph editor. You've seen it a couple of times through this course so far, but we haven't really broke down the curves that you see inside the graph editor, and that's what we're going to do now. Mm -hmm. Now, we are going to keep this video relatively simple. I mean, there are so many different things that you can do with curves. We're just going to show you the main things that you need to continue on with our current project. Right. And as we progress through the later projects in this course, we will get more and more into the graph editor and these curves. So first thing, what exactly is an animation curve? Well, it's a line that is generated by Maya that passes through all keyframes for a given attribute. This curve is responsible for driving the animation of an attribute. Now I'm going to come back to this definition several times. Let's go ahead and jump over to our whiteboard real quick. And what I'm going to do is just draw out, or sketch out if you will, a very cheap and easy graph editor. Okay, so here we go. And let's uh, actually come over here and we'll jump back over to our brush. And let's deselect that. Now we're ready to draw out <laughs> very cheap and easy. So we'll come over here, so like such. and like such. Nice. Now you guys will remember over on the side when we looked at the graph editor earlier, basically what you're looking at is value for an attribute mm -hmm. and along the bottom we were looking at time. Now we've already seen how to place keyframes down. I'm just going to throw some in there real quick. A keyframe, a keyframe, a keyframe, and a keyframe. There you go. Cool. And what happens when these keyframes are created? Well the moment that you have two, Maya is going to generate a curve that flows through all of these keyframes. Mm -hmm. So basically when we put the first one down, we get this, right? But then as we start adding more and more keyframes, this line continues to flow through all of these. And we'll just pretend that maybe there was another one over here, like such. Okay. Now, this line itself, this is our animation curve. In some applications, people refer to it as the interpolation curve. I've also heard them called function curves. And also F function curves. curves. That's so right. What exactly is an animation curve? Well, the animation curve is the thing that's going to be driving the attribute's actual animation. Okay. Okay. I mean, without this, we would have no animation. I mean, basically, the item would be at a specific value here, here. But what would happen in between? I mean, that would be the giant question mark. So this curve is generated by Maya. That's right. Okay. So what I want to do is jump over into Maya real quick, and let's go ahead and create an object and throw down some real simple animation so that we can see this in action. So we'll make a sphere, and what I'm going to do is just move this sphere in the Z direction. Let's say 12 so that it's sitting at the end of the grid, and one unit up so that it's sitting on top of the uh, grid. So cool. there we go. Now. I'm going to keyframe this sphere over, we'll do 60 frames, since that's what we've got set up right now on our timeline. How convenient. I'm going to start it right here, and I'm going to have the sphere kind of act like an airplane. Mm -hmm. It's going to take off, it's going to ascend, it's going to level out, it's okay. going to stay level, and then it's going to descend for a landing, and okay. it's going to end on the other side. Cool. So, what are the two attributes that we need to key? Translate Y and Translate Z. That's right. So let's go ahead and come over here, highlight both of these, right click, and key them since we have their values set properly for this frame. Mm -hmm. Now I'm going to drag my timeline all the way over here to frame 60, and we can take and move this over, or I can just come over here and type in negative 12 since we're going to be on the other side of our grid. Cool. And we'll keep our uh, Translate Y at 1, so this is it's going to come back down to for a landing at the same altitude in which it took off at. Sure. So I'll go ahead and highlight both of these attributes, and using the same technique that Zach introduced you guys a couple of videos back, I'm just going to hit G to quickly record both of these values. So now we've got the following animation. So what I want to do is come over here to frame 20, and this is where we're going to reach altitude. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to take translate Y, 
and move it six units up, and this is altitude, say. All right. So we'll go ahead and highlight both of these, and again, simply hit G. Now, you don't necessarily need to keyframe Translate Z in this no, case. No, not at all. I'm kind of sneaking it in there just so uh. that I can show them these static keys that we talked about earlier, though they actually didn't see them because you went about keying right. the animation properly. Right. So let's jump over here to 40 real quick. You were trying to be sneaky? I was. I just blew your cover, <laughs> dude. You did. Sorry. So let's go ahead and move this back up as well. Highlight both of these again and simply hit G. So now we start out with our sphere plane on the ground. <laughs> it slowly <laughs> takes off. It comes to altitude. We have leveled off and now flying at 6,000 units or whatever. And now coming in for landing all seat belts buckled. And we have now landed. That's a nice landing. Thank you very much. Nice and smooth. So let's go ahead and jump over to a side view and talk about the animation that I've set up. Okay. I've set it up in this particular manner for the simple fact that Translate Y is going to carry over nicely to our graph editor. Right. So what you're seeing right here, if you were to draw a line through the entire animation, is basically what we're going to see in the graph editor. Now, that's not always the case because right. in this particular setup, Translate Z is acting like time. It's just a linear forward moving value, just like time, a linear forward moving value, if sure. you will. And because of that, if I come up here to Window, Animation Editors, and Graph Editor, take a look in here, look at Translate Y. Let's go ahead and hold Alt-Shift and right mouse button just to kind of close that in like such and zoom in a little bit better. Look at this. Our sphere takes off, levels out, and comes in for a landing. Mm -hmm. Though we're referring to this in a sense uh, that involves time like such, but... Um, you know, our time value needs to move, and since it's the Y value that's going up and we're seeing a height in here, they, right. they kind of all relate. Right. It looks kind of like the actual physical trajectory that the ball is taking as it moves. That's right. So that's going to work out really well in describing everything. So now, here we are. We have got a curve that's been generated for us. The first thing I'd like to go and demonstrate is what I was talking about over on the whiteboard, and that is, let's say that we were looking at an area of animation that was not on keyframes. Let's say between frame 6 and frame 12, so mm -hmm. somewhere right over here and somewhere right over here. Now, since that curve is what is responsible for actually driving the attribute, let's minimize this, that means we can see right there our sphere is indeed moving. That's right. It's actually climbing. It's not waiting until frame 20 and then snapping to its new location. That's right. It was the curve that was res responsible for this. Right. And again, following along with the definition, what is an animation curve? It is a line, so here's a line, mm -hmm. that flows through all keyframes. Okay. That's exactly what's happening there. Okay, so what I'd like to do now, now that we have an understanding as to what a curve is, it's very important that we're able to understand this curve. So this is going to allow me to jump back over into my graph editor real quick. Take or, a look or at my whiteboard. Yeah. Ah, you didn't catch that. <laughs> Let's take a look at how to read these curves. That's right. And Zach has a very interesting approach that he uses with beginners when he teaches uh, the basics of animation curves. And it's using a kind of a speedometer <laughs> type thing. I mean, you guys are all familiar with the speedometer, right? you got a little speedometer over on the side. I'm very familiar with it. And down here is like at zero miles per hour or kilometers per hour. And as you start going up, you're getting faster and faster. Well, we're going to use this approach, but we're going to change the rule just a little bit. Here's the rules that we're going to apply. It's so a special animation speedometer. There's the speedometer straight across. This right here is going to be zero. So if the needle's horizontal, we're not moving. That's right. So the needle's right here, and we're not moving at all. That's I mean, right. that's pretty much what you get out of the zero. That's kind of the slowest speed we can possibly go. Yeah. Stop. If we happen to be all the way up here, so if we have a vertical line, which just pretend that's a vertical, then this is going to be infinitely fast. Okay? Yeah. So just like instant. Yeah. Bink. Faster than the speed of light. Just fast as you can possibly go even yeah, theoretically. Yeah, it's instant. Yeah. And if our line happens to go down here, what we're going to have is infinitely fast in reverse. <laughs> <laughs> so there's going backwards. Or in a negative direction. So generally, when Zach comes over to my house, he jumps in his car mm -hmm. and he pegs his speedometer this way. That's right. In reverse to back out of my driveway. Then he pegs it zero as he's turning his wheel. Right. Then he pegs it this way and he's on his way. That's right. The interesting thing is we can apply this to reading a curve. So if we were to sample any spot along the curve, so let's say that we sampled this area right here. Mm -hmm. Okay? So let's magnify that now. So basically what do we have? Nice magnification. Thank you very much. We have something that looks like that, right? Mm -hmm. So I'll just come in here and just lightly erase the back of that and now our speedometer indicates that 
we're not at zero. We right. actually are moving. That's right. Okay? And, of course, we're not instantly getting there. So we're moving at a constant rate at this spot. And yay so fast. As you can see, if we had a curve that, let's say, did something like this, and we sampled this guy somewhere right around there, what are we going to have? Well, now we're further up this way. We're moving a lot much, much faster. Much faster. Okay? Right. But yet, at the same time, if this same curve then did this, and we sampled right in here, now what do we have? Well, no speed. it's a flat line. It's no speed. It is a hold. And and this is really important. And just by looking at the area in between these two samplings, we can see that we go from moving forward very quickly to suddenly coming to a full stop. That's right. And not necessarily suddenly. Basically, well, this is where we have to start analyzing the curve sure. as a whole. In this particular case, in this area right here, if we sampled that, mm -hmm. we would have a very interesting looking needle. <laughs> How would you read a needle that looks... Like this. Well, we have to start sampling the tangent of that line. That's right. So basically, we're now starting to slow down a bit. Right. So when you're looking at a curve, what I'd like to do real quick is let's just come in here and erase all of this out and start talking about different curves. We'll just throw some examples in there. Mm -hmm. So let's say we have something that looks like this and this, 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 and that. So basically, we're going to end up with a keyframe in here, a keyframe over here, a keyframe here, or well, technically down like down so, <laughs> and a keyframe over here. So we can pretend that one doesn't really exist, and maybe a final keyframe right there. Nice. Okay. So what do we have? All right, we have me wanting to get. Yeah, this I was going to say I, I was counting down the seconds before yeah, you erased that. That'll just make me feel a little bit better. Right. There we go. There we go. So what do we have? Well, remember, when reading this, we looked at the speedometer and determining a rate. Right. But now it's really a rate over time because our rate fluctuates. The only way we could get away with saying that the speedometer rule applies the entire time is basically under this scenario. Um, if I had a perfect linear line like such. Well, see, the, the thing here with the speedometer is it's not going to give you, like, a precise rate forward. No. It's, it's going to give you a general idea of how your object is it's moving. It's just to give you an understanding that the steeper this line, this curve becomes, the faster of a change in that attribute's value is going to occur. That's right. And as we become more and more level or horizontal, <clears throat> then what we're dealing with is no change whatsoever. We're starting to stall out and just sit there, if you will. That's right. Now, let's turn this all to reality, looking at the curve itself. Right here, what's going to happen is as time is progressing, we're basically going to move at a linear rate. Mm -hmm. okay, so we're going to start moving. As a matter of fact, look at right here. It's an instant start moving. Mm -hmm. So we just, boom, we're boom. moving, and we keep at that same speed, and we continue at that exact same speed until we get up into here. And now that kind of hooks off. So if we were to amplify this particular section right here mm -hmm. and take a look at that up here, what is happening we're getting one of these. There we go. So see what's happening right here? We're coming in nice and straight, right. but we slowly start to slow. So right here, we're not in a straight line. Mm -hmm. So you can see, as a matter of fact, we're no longer continuing at this trajectory, if you will. We're now starting to curve off and into a nice flat as curve. As time progresses, right. the angle is steadily decreasing. So this is the equivalent of you are in your car, mm -hmm. you are doing, let's say, 60 miles an hour, you're holding your foot on the pedal just right. Speed's going, speed's going, <laughs> you speed's going. You get the cruise control on. And now what needs to happen is you need to go ahead and uh, level off, uh, if you will. Uh, sure. So you start to pull that mm -hmm. foot back on the gas a little bit. So you ease into some other speed. In this particular case, it's going to be a constant whatever. So actually, let me reword that a little bit <coughs> to use this little speed example. Mm -hmm. Here we are. Our foot is held down, and we continue to accelerate, 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 accelerate. And now we need to slowly work into a position where, or a scenario where we're maintaining a constant speed. Oh, you I see, see what you're saying. I okay. saw the look in your eye, and I was like, okay, let me rework this. So here... I was thinking about total animation, so I was seeing the flat line here at the top and thinking we were stopped. Yeah. So here, we're, gotcha. here we're, we're looking at this as speed this, right So this now. is now like an anima like an acceleration curve. It is. Like if you're uh, gauging the speed of your car in a shop somewhere. That's right. So we're kind of speeding up, speeding up, speeding off, and then smoothly easing into I gotcha. a steady speed at that point. Gotcha. Okay. This so is where you engage the cruise control. Yeah. Does that make sense? Oh, yeah. All right, so let's go ahead and erase that out. <laughs> Which means that elbow turn in the curve up here is going to be where we 
<laughs> hit somebody. <laughs> yeah, <exactly>. Instant <laughs> stop. So basically, what's going on? If we now looked at this as, let's say, a sphere traveling up, so this becomes our translate y value over here. Mm -hmm. What do we have? Well, the sphere basically goes up, 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 up at a linear amount, but then it's going to start to slow down as it reaches this point. So here's the slowdown. And then it's going to level off, which means the sphere is just going to sit there. This can be referred to as a hold, okay? Because let's pretend that here's our sphere, right? Right. And we are 10 units up. Mm -hmm. So that means that this would, somewhere right over here, my hand got <laughs> off a little bit, is 10 units up. Sure. So that once we've worked into this spot right here, we're now holding at 10. And the sphere continues to hold 10 units up as time progresses. Mm -hmm. And then... Here, the sphere is going to, take a look at this, instantly snap back down here. Right. Think back to our speedometer. If the line is pointing straight down. Infinitely fast in reverse. In a negative direction. So that actually be the sphere moving back down. So here's what we have. Instantly sphere fast. goes up, slows down a little bit, and waits, 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 boom. It's instant right It's like there. teleportation. It's yeah, it really there. is. Teleportation is a very good way to explain that. Then what happens? Well, so now the sphere has shot back down instantly. It's sitting down here at the bottom, and it's going to hold again. So it's, again, here we are with another horizontal line, meaning it, no speed whatsoever. There's mm -hmm. no change. So let's say that that happens to be at about five units over here to this guy. So this guy is now sitting at five units, and nothing is happening mm -hmm. whatsoever. But then here, look at the little curvature yeah. coming out before we go into a straight line. So in this area right here to right here, we're easing out. So the sphere slowly starts to move. It's an acceleration, if you mm -hmm. think about it. Anytime you see something like this, and pretend right there before is nice and straight, <laughs> it's the sphere is sitting there, sitting there, sitting there, starting to accelerate just a little as time progresses, a little more, a little more, a little more, and then we're up here at a constant rate of change now for the attribute value. That's right. Does that make sense? Makes perfect sense. Okay, so in this particular case, if we looked at a sphere's translate Y, it just starts out, instantly goes up, then just sits still, then just snaps down, and then just holds, and then slowly starts to go up again. Just remember, if you're a beginner, to keep using this speedometer method and keep sampling different portions of the curve so that you can see what the animation is doing at any given point. That's right. Now, we know we get a curve generated by simply placing two or more keyframes mm -hmm. on an attribute, right. we have a curve. But obviously, getting that curve is really important. Getting it shaped right is really important to sure. what the animation, the final animation is going to look like. Now, right now, in this particular case, I set a keyframe. I set a keyframe. I set a keyframe, a keyframe, and a keyframe. Th that right there is exactly what I did up here on our little miniature graph editor. That's a nice arrow. Now, let's think about this. Wouldn't this actually result in something that looked like, just pretend the line's a little bit straighter. Sure. Like that? Well, if you were playing connect the dots, sure. Exactly. And beginners tend to think, well, the curve is just going to be a line that flows through all of the dots. Isn't this a line that flows through all of the dots? It is. Well, so is this one up here, mm -hmm. even though it looks uh, a little interesting when we start getting into this area right here. So what allows us to manipulate our curve in such a way that we can generate something that looks like this as opposed to something we're going to get by default that looks like that? Mm. Mm. This is what is known as tangents. Okay? Every keyframe that we create has a tangent handle. So what exactly is a tangent? Well, the tangent is a line or vector that indicates the slope of a curve at a given point. Mm. And our given point is a keyframe. So basically, if we took any one of these guys right here, what would the tangent be? Well, it's going to indicate the slope of the curve. So in this case, we're going to have a tangent handle that looks like this and a tangent handle that's going to look like this. So this particular keyframe would have two tangent handles. Oh, that's right. And uh, this, ca this guy over here, well, there is no starting spot. So right. his tangent handle really becomes irrelevant. His tangent handle is just going to look like that. So he's got one on the right side, but not one on the left. That's right. But right here, since I drew this a bit sloppy, it looks like there's an ease in that's happening, how we're kind of slowing down and easing into this mm -hmm. spot. So this could have a tangent handle that looks, well, if I could draw straight, like this. Ah, 
So notice we have a slope going on right here, and because of that slope, our tangent handle is not lying right on the curve. And for those of you who may be familiar with uh, Beget style curves, mm -hmm. that's exactly what we're dealing with here. Precisely. As a matter of fact, if I go ahead and jump back over to Maya now, we can start taking a look at some of these things. So here's our curve, and when I select the curve by simply marquee over or clicking it, look at all these extra little brown lines that show up all over the place mm -hmm. that have little dots on the end. These are our tangent handles. The keyframes have both an in tangent and an out tangent. And what these are going to do are define how the curve is going to enter the keyframe and then right. how it's going to exit the keyframe. That's right. As a matter of fact, here's a really good example of what I just showed a second ago mm -hmm. where the tangent handle is not lying straight on the curve because we're starting to ease in. As a matter of fact, if I just alt shift and really bring that in, that will become a bit easier to see. Right how we're easing. We're starting yeah. to come in and slow down. So in other words, time is progressing, but our value change is becoming a little less and a little less and a little less. And here, there's no value change whatsoever. That's right. The line kind of gracefully flows into the key. That's correct. Let's go ahead and bring that back out just a little bit, kind of like such. Yeah. Wow, yeah. Lots of quick zooms there. <laughs> yeah. All right. So now, now that we kind of have a general understanding of how to read a curve. Mm -hmm. Basically, we're taking a look at time, and we're looking at value, and as we plot this out or sample any spot, we can see what kind of a value change there is over a given amount of time. Sure. Simple enough. So what do we need to look at now? Well, what kind of tangents do we have? Kind? What kind? kind? Wow. There are multiple kinds of tangents? There are. Now, surely you jest. So we come up here to our menu and take a look at tangents. We have multiple types of tangents available to us. Boom, right off. Nice right. that they have a menu for that kind yeah, of thing. Yeah, isn't that cool? Spline. Mm -hmm. What's spline going to do? Spline is going to try to maintain a smooth curve coming into and out of the tangent, if both in and out is set this way. Right. So in this particular case, if I said, let's take these guys up here and say spline, here we go. We can't level off into a nice straight line because we must go into this curve over here smoothly. Right. And the only way to do that is to get a spline set up like this. What we were looking at a second ago was clamped. Mm -hmm. And clamped is going to allow for a nice smooth in and then, and then it'll hold. It's going to clamp out what is known as overshoot. And here's overshoot right here where basically if we were to now come back into our scene and take a look at our sphere, remember, it climbed to altitude, so here's altitude. And we set it to an altitude of 6. That's right, so there's our value 6. Mm -hmm. Now, as I continue to move our timeline indicator, we shouldn't go up anymore. We should say s stay straight on this grid line right here. But for some reason, the wind lifts the airplane sphere <laughs> up a little higher and then brings it back down at frame 40, right there, back on the line again. Right. So you can see that's going to give us a bit of a problem. Right. We're not holding that value precisely, although this is a nice thing to use for, like, flowing organic motion. Yeah, absolutely. So in this particular case, clamped happened to do the trick nicely for mm -hmm. us, where it clamped us from any kind of overshoot, and it also provided a nice smooth in and a nice smooth out. So we transition into that hold very smoothly, but we don't go any higher than that. That's right. Now we have other types available as well. Linear. Ooh. So linear means we're going to keep a constant motion That's the right. entire what time, just straight. There will be no acceleration in. nor straight deceleration. And straight. That's right. So there, exactly. There's no easing into the keyframe. There's no easing out of the keyframe. So in this case, we would go up at a constant rate. We would stop moving, and then we would go down at a constant rate. We would neither accelerate nor would we decelerate. Right. So you're going to get something that's going to look a lot more robotic. So play. <laughs> so can you see it? <laughs> yeah. You can feel the little... Jarring the motion. kind of jerk at the top of the curve. So there. yeah, this is something you can expect from these carnivals slash fairs that come around to the small towns and they hook up their little right. rides and you get on you're like ah yeah ah whiplash yeah that kind <laughs> of thing. So if we come back up here real quick, let's take a look at what it looks like if I uh, back up under tangents do clamped. So remember how it was very robotic y feeling. Now look at that. Smooth. See so kind of smoothly level off there at the yeah, top. Much smoother. Let's go ahead and rewind this and bring our graph editor back. All right, so. Um, and, of course, if we came over here and changed this back to spline, now it's just a yeah, you continuous... Almost, you almost don't even feel it level off. No, it's it just, just kind of arcs up and climb comes back all down. the way up to the apex and then just start dropping. Looks right? like the ball right got kind of tossed. Yeah. So um, coming back over here to tangents, um, one that's very similar to clamped is flat. Mm. You can uh, generate very similar uh, results from it. I think you'll notice that this looks just like clamped, mm -hmm. right? Except here's the kicker. 
Clamped is looking for basically two keyframes that are going to have the exact same value so that it can generate a hold, a clamped uh, result from the curve. Sure. And uh, with flat, so you can see how this gave us nothing different whatsoever. Right. Watch this. Let's go ahead and come over here to translate Z. And now with translate Z, let's back this out a little bit. As a matter of fact, I'm going to change the way this curve looks. There we go. Just by alt, shift, and dragging. Now look at these two guys. Mm -hmm. Let's grab both these keyframes. If I came up here and said take their tangents, change them to clamped, no difference whatsoever. Right. Come back up here to tangents and say change them to flat, boom. Mm. Ah, now we can see what flat's doing. Flat is taking our tangent handles and basically making them horizontal with our time. Right. Okay, so now by taking these flat, now we have an ease into this and an ease out of this. An ease into this and an ease out of this. This is going to make a little uh, smooth. It's like we'd go juttery. forward and then slow down and stop for a second, then go you know, accelerate, yeah, smooth, then stop. Jutter, yeah. jitter, if you will, going forward. We'll take a look at this. So here we go. Uh, 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 <laughs> uh. So if you were in an airplane and we were flying at 300 miles Ooh, an hour, we would clash. quickly slow down and then quickly speed back up. And this is what we're looking at. Trying to teach somebody to drive. Yeah, for sure. So um, let's go ahead and turn that back into something like linear. Linear. Yeah. As a matter of fact, I was just kind of thinking, here's a really good time to just talk just for a second about those static keyframes. Sure. We mentioned them a couple of uh, videos back when Zach was setting up the animation and uh, our sphere was moving forward. This is another case where our sphere is indeed moving forward mm -hmm. in regards to just the translate Z axis. But uh, are these keys really necessary? Well, no. We have a straight line, and it only takes two points to determine a straight line. That's right. If I delete that keyframe right there, it does not change the quality of the curve whatsoever. That's right. So I'll just highlight by marquee-select uh, marquee both of these keyframes. Simply hit the delete key. Ah. And because the curve hasn't changed shape, the animation hasn't changed it's either. It's just a little bit less data that Maya has to save when you save the file, and it's just a tad bit less that needs to be calculated when you're playing your animation back. Right. So let's go ahead and come back over here to our translate Y value. Uh, another one, uh, actually there's two more that we're going to get into these a little bit later on. Uh, these are stepped. Okay. Mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, if we came in here and we do stepped, Ooh. this is what we get. Coming out of this, we're just going to hold this value, okay? Mm -hmm. Coming out of this, we're going to continue to hold this value and then until we approach our next keyframe. At that time, it's just going to be instant. As a matter of fact, if I was to undo that, grab the entire curve by just selecting the curve, this has all of my keyframes sure. now. Come over here to tangents and do step. That kind of makes it a little easier to see the stepping motion. Right. Now, so now it looks like we have a step up and a step down. But basically, what we get is a hold. And an instant, we remember, jump. here we are. If we were to sample this area and put it on the speedometer, where is our curve pointing? It's straight up and down. So it's infinitely fast. Infinitely fast. So instant up, then we hold, and then instant drop. Let's go ahead and minimize this and take a look at what this looks like back over here in our side view. So play. Dink. Dink. Yeah. The last is very quick. but So bink, bink, like such. Right. Okay. Pretty interesting. Very huh? cool. As a matter of fact, if you looked at this from the front front view... It's a little less objective, if you will, because we're not going to see Translate Z since that's coming at us. So what we're going to see is just a, a ball that just instantly jumps changes, up, jumps down. And real quickly jumps down. And that's it. Yeah. So there you go. So very handy when you need to have a, a type of motion like that. And that will come up. Well, remember that uh, not all animation is going to be motion. You could need something like a blinking light. And so that would be your, the animation curve you'd use to cause a light to just blink on and off. Absolutely. Instant off, instant off. And we'll be coming back to it because we're going to need it a little bit later on in time. Right. So now that we've looked at our different tangent types, I would like to point out for just a second that we also have the ability to have different tangents on the in and on the out. If I wanted to, I could select just this keyframe, marquee select, right click on it. I can come down in this menu to tangents. Mm -hmm. Now, of course, if by selecting any of these right here, spline, linear, clamp, stepped, and fixed, by the way, I didn't mention that in the menu up above. We're going to be talking about fixed a little bit later on. It's a little bit more uh, of an advanced subject, if you will. It deals with just maintaining the quality of a curve at a given angle when you find something that you like, but you need to adjust the value. But by adjusting the value of that particular keyframe, you don't want to mess up the quality you've already produced. In other words, the way the curve looks. Okay. And you'd set it to fix. But we'll get into that a little bit later on. But here, we can adjust in and out individually. Up Ooh. here, this is affecting both in and out, as, as well as coming all the way up here to our tangents, unless we did in and out here. 
So by selecting in and out, we can then say, look, coming into this keyframe, I want you to be linear. And then going out of it, I want you to be something else. So let's say going out, I want you to be uh, spline. I don't know. So here we can see coming in nice and straight. Look what we get going out. Now yeah. it's going to try to smoothly come out of this as we approach over here to this guy who's currently clamped. So we keep our line nice and straight. Cool. So um, kind of see how that works there? Absolutely. So let's go ahead and grab the whole thing. Take a look at this. Now our handles are kind of out of whack. That's right. Well, that's because we've determined one type of interpolation in and that's then another right. type on the out. Absolutely. So uh, let's go ahead and come back to tangents, and let's just make this clamped again. Now, how do we start adjusting the curve? Talked about what a curve is, how the curve gets created, uh, how to go in here and adjust the overall tangents, which did indeed adjust the curve a bit. Sure. But now, what do you need to do to get full control of how this curve is going to look? Ooh, this is where things start to get very important. Well, first of all, you've already seen that to select a curve, you just simply click on the curve, and all that's really selected, because the curve really doesn't exist. That's right. Is um, I know that may have blew a few people's Yeah, just, just relax. The curve is like a, a theoretical path. That's right. The thing that really exists are the keyframes. So what just happened? Our keyframes, all of our keyframes got selected mm -hmm. by going over and clicking, bink, like such. Now, we can... Come in here and select keyframes individually, and I'm just marking over it like such. You can come in here and try to single click. It's a little bit more difficult to get the mouse in the precise area to grab it. So I, I just always select I like say that. I've done a lot of animation. I always mark key select. Um, we do have the ability to use the standard key combinations that we have introduced you to back in the viewport when selecting objects. We can apply these to our keyframes as well. So that if I just click on one like such, I've selected it. Now if I hold shift down. I will toggle the selection of anything I go over, like such. So I can add that to the selection. I can pull that out of the selection. Just by holding shift. If I hold, uh, let's say, control down, that only removes. Mm -hmm. So I can remove something from a selection. And if I hold shift control, that will allow me to add. But that's it. If I go back over one that's already been added, it stays You're not added. deselecting. That's right. So very handy. Generally, I just use shift. Another thing to point out that's very useful in Maya, and not all 3D animation packages allow you to do this, that is come in here and select multiple tangent handles. tangent handles. How cool is that? Right. Which, of course, selecting a tangent handle is just a matter of selecting one side or the other. That's right. And you will see that the tangent handle itself lights up. Now, another thing that can be done to change the curve is, well, change the actual values. Mm -hmm. Change where this keyframe sits at, at what frame, or at what value is being recorded. And just remember, if you're a little bit sketchy on this, moving a keyframe up and down is changing the value of that keyframe. That's right. And moving a keyframe left and right is changing when that keyframe occurs in time. That's right. Right now, if you remember, our little air sphere back over here climbs up to an altitude of 6 and then holds that altitude. Let's say that we've changed our mind and we want it to move up to an altitude of well, 12. Mm. So I can come in here and grab this, and I can move it up. Though moving is special. We're going to talk about moving in just a second. Right. First, I'm going to introduce you to our stats fields that we can use instead. Ooh. Basically, the first field over here allows us to adjust the time, while the second one allows us to adjust the, a value of the key. Well, in this particular case, we don't want to adjust the timing. When we hit frame 20, we want that to be the point in which we level out. Right. So all I need to do is come up here and take my 6 that has been recorded there and take that up to a value of 12 and hit enter. And we see the curve change ah. immediately. In this particular case, it's going to be more like a roller coaster ride where the plane is <laughs> going to come all the way up, level off, and then begin falling and then kind of slow back down a little bit and keep a constant rate. That's there one of those end. short commuter flights. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Now let's go ahead and select this keyframe over here take it up to a value of 12, and because we have clamped tangent types, bink, it's going to prevent any kind of overshoot. Right. We'll level out, hold, and drop. Let's like a, take a look at the result of this back over here in our side view. So we fly up. Ooh, we're flying Almost up out of the much screen. higher now. Yeah. And now we're leveling off, and we're flying back down. Now, could you have changed the value of both of those keyframes at the same time? Absolutely. I can just come back over to the graph editor, and let's say that 12 was a little too high. I want to go to 10. I've selected both. Come up here. 10, enter, nice. drop it down a little bit. There's some other neat things that you can do with these fields up here, and we'll talk about them a little bit right. later. Uh, one thing to keep in mind is that by changing this number to a higher number, we're actually going to make the animation faster in these, in a sense, because we've got a larger range of value right. to go over in the same in amount of time that we right. had a smaller amount of value. Well, it's like if you, t if you tell somebody to cross the room in 10 seconds, that's they're right. going to be moving relatively slowly. That's right. But if you tell them to cross your front yard in 10 seconds, they have to move a whole lot faster. That's right. So there you go. Exactly. 
So uh, let's Provided go ahead. Provided you have a small room in a big <laughs> yard. <laughs> Precisely. So let's go ahead and set these guys back down to a value of six, like such. Now, if we wanted to adjust their timing, like let's say that, you know, 20 was just a little bit too long. For whatever reason, the air traffic tower has said that we must get <laughs> up to altitude within the first 10 seconds, which means you're going to it's going to be a Concorde liftoff no or something. No joke. Let's go ahead and simply change our time as opposed to our attribute value to 10. Boom. Look at that. So now much quicker mm -hmm. are we going to approach altitude. Let's take a look at this back over here. Boom. And then, and then we slowly, slowly descend. descend. Nice. So that's what's going on there. As a matter of fact, we can come up here and say, all right, fine. The whole thing ends at 60. I want, uh, oops, excuse me. I want to go ahead and start descending at frame 55. Yeah. There Ooh. we go. So now the steeper fall off. Wow. So again, if we I lose my lunch on that landing. If we make the little speedometer circle, we're going yay so fast one way, but going the other way, we're getting we're getting closer to approaching that infinitely fast. And since we're going downwards in reverse. Yeah. So here we go. Play. So up and boom. Yeah. yeah. I hope the flight has vomit bags. Wow. Yeah. So it's a much quicker drop off right there. All right. So with that, let's go ahead and put our timing back to. Uh, what do we have around 40? I'm just kidding. Wrong I'm just one. kidding. Six. Let's get over here. <laughs> it's okay. Put this over at 40 and put this one back over here at 20, like such. All right. Now let's go ahead and start talking about working with the tangent handles themselves. Okay. Here we go. Now we're about to start getting some custom curves. I'm going to go ahead and zoom in, make this a little bit tighter. So now rather than focus on changing the keyframes. How do we start moving things? That's Actually, right. not just handles. Let's start with just keyframes. But okay. how do you move things? First, grab your move tool. Mm. If you do not have your move tool selected, you'll notice that I cannot move this guy around. Now, check this out. I am not using the left mouse button when I click. No. What is the left mouse button? It is simply select, as seen here. That's right. Okay. So I need to use the middle mouse button. But now I get this white circle. Mm. It is telling me that I do not have a tool selected that will allow me to manipulate the location of this keyframe. Grab my move tool, come back over here, select the uh, keyframe, middle click, check it out. I now uh, get a, an icon for my mouse pointer that has four different arrows indicating I can move up, down, left, and right. Now, so now you, you can intuitively change the timing and the value of this keyframe. That's right. The moment you start manipulating this keyframe, you better have in mind what's going on because if you just carelessly come in here, click and start trying to adjust the value up, you may very well fall off the value left and right in regards to time. So then you're going to start messing up both the timing and how much that attribute value changes. That's right. And this, of course, will result in a different curve. By moving this around, look what's happening to my curve. Mm -hmm. Maya, of course, continues to change the curve around. I can even go back before the starting keyframe. And we get a different curve. I'll just hit Z to undo that. Sure. So keep that in mind. With an understanding of this, and basically that you're moving both value and time, uh, this is a good time to go ahead and introduce you guys to gesture moving. Mm -hmm. And that is by holding the shift key down, we have the ability to constrain the direction we move. Watch this. I'm going to hold shift down, and let's say I wanted to change my altitude only, which means I'm changing my value over here. I don't want to affect time. So basically, you want to slide the keyframe straight up. Straight up or straight down. Mm -hmm. I'm going to hold shift. While holding shift, I'm going to middle click. Look what my icon's done. It's turned into a question mark. <laughs> it's now wanting to know which way would I like to move this keyframe. All I need to do is gesture in the direction I would like for the keyframe to be moved. So I'm going to gesture up. Ah, the moment it saw which way I wanted the keyframe to move, it instantly changed my mouse pointer into an up and down arrow, indicating that I can only move up and down. Right. If I try to slide left and right, you'll notice I cannot affect this keyframe's time value. I can only affect its attribute value with up and down motion. Nice. Very handy. Let's go ahead and Z undo that. Again, hold shift, middle click. Now I'm going to adjust your left. Bink. Look at that. So you get a different kind of icon now. That's right. Now we can go left and right. Along with moving these keyframes around, one of the things you may have noticed is that, let's go ahead and let go of shift altogether, hold the middle mouse button, is as I move these, you'll feel a bit of a snap, almost like it's just uh, snap, 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 left and right. Mm -hmm. But up and down is smooth. And the reason for this is we have these two little rulers up here, if you will. This is a snap for time, and this is a snap for value. And what it means is that as you move your a uh, keyframe around, it's going to snap to the nearest integer value in regards to time or value. 
generally you want to stay on an integer value in regards to time. Meaning you're on a direct frame. That's right. You're on frame 5. You're on frame 6. Uh, if you were to turn that off, you could end up on frame 5.66 or something sure. like that. We're gonna for now we're gonna keep everything where we're always on a given frame, a specific frame. Cool. And now over here on the side, generally you're gonna find your value snap turned off, and the reason is uh, usually your values are gonna kind of jump around. Sure, they're gonna kind of blend between integer values, so you'll have like a value of 5.632 instead of like a value of five, then six, then seven. Precisely. Okay, so uh, with that understanding, let's see what else can we talk about. I guess now that we've seen how we can move these around, let's start moving around tangent handles to truly affect the way the curve is going to look. Right. What tangent handlers are going to do are change the shape of the curve rather than the location of the keyframes themselves. That's, all right. That's right, because remember, again, the tangent itself is what is going to indicate the slope of the curve. Mm -hmm. So here we go. As we go up, as we go down. Nice. Now we see some very interesting things occurring out of this. Right. Right now, these two handles are unified, mm -hmm. which means if I manipulate one, the other one is going to do the exact thing in the opposite direction. Okay. So if I go up, the other one did the exact same thing. It went down because it was in the opposite direction. Basically, it means as you move one, the other will move in conjunction to maintain a straight line. That's that's right. Well, not a, not necessarily a straight line because we can break these and then reunify okay. them. Okay, I and see. And then at that point, it could look like a V or something. Um, so anyways, let's go ahead as we move this up and down like such. You can see how it is indeed affecting uh, the, the quality of the curve. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about the result we have now. Our sphere plane is going to take off. And it's going to climb up to altitude. Then it's going to go past altitude. Right. And then it's going to basically plane out for just a second, a frame or two. And then it's going to start descending. There's a little bit of turbulence, right? Yeah. And then it's going to plane, plane out for just a second. Then it's going to, going to start increasing its altitude again, plane out, and then finally come in for a landing. Wow. So basically air traffic controller control was having them go up and down up and down just a little bit at the very end of dodging around some rough weather other planes or bad weather so here we are let's hit play so up down up down and we haven't changed the location of any of the keyframes all we're doing is changing the tangent handles that's right again it's very easy to see the relationship between the graph's curve and the motion of the sphere because again I'm picking on the translate y direction that's right this could have been x and in this particular case, X would have been sliding back and forth, or Z. Or this could case. have been scale. It could have been scale. We're right. scaling larger, smaller, larger, smaller. It's just easy to see this right now. It's easier to visualize it because this is affecting Translate Y, and we're just in a side view, and we're seeing what looks like almost the exact same thing. And I highly recommend, after you make it through this lesson, to go through and practice making different types of animation, or even just drawing out different types of curves on a piece of paper and figuring out what that animation is going to result. Exactly. So... Pretty easy manipulating these guys, but yeah. what if you need to do things like break them? Let's go ahead and hit Z to undo a couple of crazy moves I did there. Now, this is where I'm just going to jump us in quickly because we're starting to run out of time for the lesson. We're going to jump up here to our menu bar. Mm -hmm. Very first button right here when we start dealing with our tangents is a break tangents button. What break tangents will allow us to do is we can just grab a keyframe, break the tangents. Ooh. You'll notice that the left-hand side is colored a bluish color, and the right-hand side is still a brown color. This is just indicating that the tangent handles have indeed now been severed from one another. They're independent. That's right. So I come over here. We grab. We can move around like such. And uh, if for whatever reason I start to get back in a, a position where I need these guys to be unified again, then we can just simply come up here to keys, where you can see break keys is also, or break tangents is also found. Mm -hmm. I can say unify. Look at their color brown. So right. now if I grab and start to move, you can see they're moving together That's right. like such. Um, very, very simple stuff. So let's go ahead and grab this, come up here to tangents and tell it clamp to fix that back. Cool. So we can come through here. We can adjust these things all day long just to start giving the kind of, oops, hey, break for me, just to give us the kind of look that we're looking for. So maybe like this. And then with this guy, maybe we'll just drag him up. So there we go. Now the plane's going to lift off, come back down, go back up, and then abruptly <laughs> smack into the bottom of another plane. Yeah, it's, you're going to feel a you're going to feel a very robotic type jerk right there. Take a look. Rewind, play. Up, down. Zip. So here it is, right in this area. Zip. Right, actually about right here. Yep. It's like it hits a roof or something. Yeah. Bonk. So there you go. Again, just by adjusting these tangent handles. So let's go ahead and. <laughs> Um, we'll come up here to keys. We'll go ahead and unify those two guys. 
And you can also uh, hit the icon next to the break. Yeah, you can, for sure. Now let's go ahead and just grab the entire thing and clamp. Mm-hmm. So speaking real quick about, we'll go ahead and talk about a few more of these. We've talked a little bit about the snapping that we have available. Uh, one of the things I've been doing is going up under my menus, like to get the tangents. You do have the ability to come in here quickly and say, you know, give me spline. Uh, go ahead and give me clamped. Give me linear. Uh, give me flat tangents. And give me the stepped. Okay, so now there's all the ones that we right. saw earlier as well. Let's go ahead and take this back to clamp. Like so all good toolbars, it's all of your most common commands. You have those. And then over here, we have the ability to break our tangents, to reunify them. And then these two guys, and this is pretty much going to bring our lesson to a close. Uh, we'll focus a lot more of these on in the future. We will apply this, though, to our little bouncing sphere mm-hmm. to give us some, some uh, more character, if you will, right. in the bounce. But what this allows us to do is to free any weighted tangents. Hmm, what does mm. that mean? Well, check this out. Let's pick on this poor guy right here again. Let's grab his tangent handle, middle click, and let's try to stretch it. I can't stretch it. I can only go up and down like such. Right. Let's try to bring it back some. We're bringing it forwards and backwards this is basically weighting the tangent. Can't do that. What needs to happen is basically I need to take my curve, go ahead and come up here to curves, mm-hmm. and then come down here to weighted tangents. The moment I hit weight at tangents, watch all of the tangent handles. Ooh, they get bigger, and then they get these filled-in dots at either end. That's right. The filled-in dots are indicating that right now they're locked, meaning that I can come in here, middle click, and grab one of these, but I still cannot stretch it. So but you have a weight. You just can't do anything with it right But now. I now can come up here, and I can say, free the tangent weight. Bink. Now look at this. They're no longer solid. Cool. They're hollow now square. hollow squares. This allows me to wait. And since they're unified, basically what's happening is the same thing on the opposite side, just in the opposite direction. Sure, sure. So I'm pushing this in. It's pulling in on the other side. So now I can wait this, allowing me to really produce any kind of curve that I'd like to get. Right. As you increase the length of that tangent handle, you're, in, you're increasing its weight, meaning you're increasing the amount of influence that tangent handle has over the curve. That's right. Now take a look at this. All because I free this tangent handle, does not mean that this tangent handle or any other tangent handle was free. That's right. By weighting the curve, it weighted just that. All keyframes on the curve, all tangent handles. But you must go in and free the ones that you would like to manipulate yourself. That's right. Okay. So let's go ahead and undo and undo. I guess a final thing that we could talk about real quick is just show that. Here we are. Let's go ahead. Let's take this guy. Let's free him grab this guy, and I'm going to hold shift down to grab this guy. So now I just want to show you guys that I can indeed manipulate two hand tangent handles at the same time. You've already seen that you can select both at the same time. Let's go ahead and break both of these cool. to make it a bit more interesting. And, uh, oops, hang on, didn't want to do that. Let's select both of these. And now I can come out, I can go up. Ooh, nice. And get some interesting stuff going. So now we've got a little wavy motion. Sure. Okay, like that. And, of course, the shift gesture does apply just the same. So I'll hold down shift. Middle click, get a little question mark, and I'll just say I want to weight it by coming out or in. Like so. Nice. Very nice. So there you go. Just one more thing I, I am a little bit curious about. The, it looks like these keyframes don't have weights by default. Mm. This is going to get us over into our animation settings. Let me think. Before I go over there, because that was the last thing on the list of the stuff I'd like to show you guys. Is there anything else I want to show you now? I don't think so. At this point, we do have a pretty clear understanding as to what an animation curve is. Basically, it is a curve that's generated by Maya that flows through all of our keyframes. Right. This curve can indeed be manipulated by us. We've taken a look at how we can read these curves. Basically, it's just an understanding of the relationship between time and the value. This is showing us what's happening to that value as time progresses. That's right. Um, and we've taken a very close look at different ways of manipulating the curves. Now, we've not talked about every single possible way this is going to occur as we progress deeper and deeper into the course. So the final thing Zach is asking about is, you know, the default curves that are created. There's a couple of things we can control. Well, you'll notice that these uh, weighted tangents give you a lot of power they over do. adjusting how your curve looks. And by default, these uh, your your curves will not be weighted. That's right. Also, by default, you may want to change what kind of tangent handles are created. Right now, with Maya 6.5, everything that I put down is a clamp type, right. which is great for something like a walk where a foot needs to go forward, plant, and then hold for yay so long, and then come off. And here we go. This is a hold. If we didn't have a hold in there, if we didn't have clamped, and instead we had spline values, basically we would end up with, oops, excuse me, we'd end up with this right here. The foot would walk forward, 
drop down to the ground, but then the foot would continue to slide forward, slide back, and then it would start walking forward again, right. and that would look really bad. So controlling the default tangent types and controlling if the curves that are created are weighted or not weighted can easily be done by coming down here to our animation preferences, which really just opens up the general preferences dialog. Mm -hmm. It just has us uh, selected down here on the timeline. All we need to do is come up here to animation, and from an an inside of animation, we can simply click weighted tangents so that all curves that get created are weighted, and then uh, our default in and out tangent types, and this is where we can come in here and we can specify, are they spline, linear, clamped, flat, or stepped? Cool. Okay. You'll notice we do not have fixed as an option. Right. That's really on a that's on a special basis that that's used right. for special cases. So uh, we'll go ahead and change that back to clamped and leave that like such. So with that, I think that's pretty much going to cover everything I wanted to. I mean, again, this is really just an introduction to these animation curves. Um, keep in mind that if if need be, you can come in here, hold shift. You can move all selected keyframes at the same time if you want to relocate the entire curve. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a lot of other neat things I'd like to show you, like scaling, et cetera, but we'll save these right. a little bit later on. Um, so with that, <laughs> we've covered enough. We've covered <laughs> enough, definitely. Uh, let's go ahead and come back up here so that you guys can see. We'll hit uh, A just to frame everything up. So there we are with our final animated scene. And with that, that's going to go ahead and wrap up this video. In the next video, we'll go ahead and refine the animation that we've pl placed on our little character. Yep. Thanks a lot, guys.